Very interesting. The topic for tonight is why is it so difficult to ask for help? And how did that topic come up? People brought it up to me, you know, that it's very hard for them to ask for help. But interestingly, last week when we were together and we had a topic and Rabbi, do you remember? The topic ended up being a very cultural topic. It ended up being about culture. What was the topic, Rabbi? Do you remember? Uh, uh, yeah, interesting yeah, question. I was thinking on the spot. Well, that we, we Russian Jews don't know how to express our feelings because we lived in tyranny. And that is cultural. We are, we reserved and we not showing our weakness. And I believe that Albert, a friend of ours, also said that there's also cultural in terms of a man showing feelings. It's a sign of weakness. It's another cultural thing. So a man has to be no feelings. Excellent, 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 excellent. So with that class that we did last week and the idea of culture came up about that it's very difficult to express emotions, even if you're feeling emotions, right? With that idea, and that it turns into a cultural conversation, the next question, and I think it's going to be cultural again, the next question is, why is it so difficult to ask for help? Why do people in general have a hard time asking for help? You know, there's a saying, uh, real men never ask for directions. If you're a real man, you're never gonna ask for directions. So on a personal note, there was one year that my husband and I, Shlomo and I were in Israel and we were traveling around and we really wanted to get from point A to point B and point A to point B had nothing to do with going through any Arab villages at all. But we had our little GPS going and suddenly we noticed that the GPS is black. Now in Israel, if your GPS is black, that means you are in bad territory. That means you're no longer in Israel. You're in Arab territory. So of course the thing to do would be pick up the phone and let's call somebody and find out where we are, where we need to go. Let's do something, but no, 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 no. Shlomo insisted, <laughs> although we were in Arab territory, Slomo insisted, no, this was the way I had planned on, uh, on us going. Rather than ask for directions, it was easier to say, no, this was the plan. I had planned on going in this di direction. Now I knew full well, nobody plans on going in that direction when they're traveling around Israel. And it, those, it was during the years that there were very difficult things going on. Um, with the Arabs and with Israel. It wasn't a very peaceful time. It was when the scuds were coming across. So it was not a time that you wanted to be driving in an area that was not safe. Point being that it is very difficult to ask for help. So let's talk about that tonight. Why is it so difficult to ask for help? Interestingly, it is easier for, some, for us if we hear about something going on for a stranger, right? A stranger has a problem and they're saying they're desperate, they're poor, they have no money, they have no food, the children haven't eaten in days, everybody goes running. It's easier sometimes to help a stranger because the stranger's cries, the stranger's screams are so much louder than somebody that's close to us because somebody that's close to us is not going to scream for help. They're gonna be embarrassed to ask for help. They're going to feel ashamed. They're gonna be almost afraid to ask for help. They're gonna be afraid that they might be rejected if they ask for help. But a stranger, when a stranger is screaming for help, we go running to help a stranger. With a person that we know, it's kind of a hint. We have to pick up the hint that they're having a problem but they're not going to come out right and say, you know what, I'm broke. I don't have enough money to feed my children right now because they think that they're going to be judged for the weakness that they have. 
and people will think that they are weak. People will think that they're asking for help because they don't have the strength to deal with their own problem. So one thing we learn is that when you're asking for help, when we get to that point and we talk about how you ask for help, when you're asking for help, if you need help, don't hint about that you need help. You need to state very clearly that you need help. When, when you need help, it's not obvious to the other people that you need help. It's obvious to you that you need help. It's obvious to you that you're having financial problems and you can't deal with the strength, stress of finances. It's obvious to you that you're having mental health issues or that you're having alcohol issues or that you're having shalom bias issues in your home. To you, it's very, very obvious. And you think, well, it's, if it's obvious to me, isn't it clear? Don't, doesn't everybody realize that I'm having problems? Don't people see that I'm having problems? People don't see it unless you tell it to them. Yes, if you're blind and you have a st walking stick because you're blind, people will help you because it's clear that you're having problems. You're blind, you have a walking stick and you're walking with a walking stick. So people will automatically say, oh, can I help you cross the street? Oh, can I help you get up the steps? Or if somebody is in a wheelchair or somebody is on crutches, another example, we can see that they're having problems. We can see that they need help and we'll run over and we'll help them right away. But when we ourselves are having problems, but it's not a very obvious problem, it's not that we are blind, it's not that we're in a wheelchair, it's not that we're on crutches, it's not that we have amputations on us, it's just that we need help. We can't expect people to read our minds and know that we need help. We have to tell people that we need help. We have, we have to express it, we have to say it, we have to say we need help. And it's very difficult. It's very difficult for us to ask for help. We all want to appear very independent. We all want to appear very strong. We want to appear competent. And we're afraid that if we ask for help, we're going to look like we're incompetent. We're going to look like we're very needy. We're going to look like we're dependent on other people. And we don't want to appear that way. But what I wanted to say is that although we look at asking for help as a weakness, really asking for help is a strength. It's a strength. Why is it a strength? How, how could you say, Dr. Fay, that asking for help is a strength? It shows weakness. It shows I need people. No, because if you're asking for help, it shows faith in other people. It shows a strength. It shows a connection to humanity. It means you're not dealing with life on your own. You realize that you're part of a community. You're part of a group and that you're looking to relate to the group. You're, when you're asking for help, you're, you're relating to somebody. You're giving them an opportunity to help you. And you're giving them an opportunity to have a relationship with you. Now you say, well, you know, what if I ask and they say, no, oh, I can't deal with that. That means I'm being rejected. No, it doesn't, it may not have anything to do with you being rejected. It may just have to do with that they may have something going on in their lives. For example, if somebody comes over to me, let's say I'm taking care of my elderly mother. She's 92 years old. I'm taking care of my mother. And the phone rings and I'm very busy. I'm in the middle of taking care of my mother. I'm in the middle of getting her out of the car after a long car ride and her legs are not really moving well and she's an amputee. So I'm taking care of my mother and my phone rings and somebody says, oh, this, actually, this actually happened. And my phone rings and somebody says to me, oh, Dr. Faye, hi, I need you. I need a letter of recommendation right away because I'm going for a passport today and I need a letter from you telling saying in the letter that it's for my mental health and I need to get to Israel right away. So Dr. Faye, I need a letter of recommendation right now. Now I'm holding my mother, right? And I have to say to that person, 
I can't help you right now, but I will be able to help you in an hour. Now, does that mean I'm a bad person because I prioritize? Does that mean I don't like the person? No, I like the person. I want to have a relationship with the person. I'm very happy that the person asked me for help. I want the person to ask me for help again another time. So I'm not rejecting the person, but sometimes if I can't help the person at that moment, it's only because at that moment, I am busy taking care of something else that is very, very important. And I think that that's very important for us to realize that if you ask for help, and if somebody can't help you at that particular moment, that doesn't mean that they're looking at you like you're a loser. It doesn't mean that they're looking at you as though you're a very needy person. That's not what's happening. What's happening is that at that particular moment, they just can't help you. It may have been a good time for you, but it was not a good time for them. Interestingly enough, there really is a phobia called fear of asking for help. It's F-O-A-H, and it's listed as a real phobia. There are people that truly are afraid of asking for help. They're afraid. I, I'm not, and I don't just mean a little bit afraid. We talk about height phobias. We talk about agoraphobia, being afraid of going out in public. There are so many phobias. This is also a phobia, fear of asking for help. Asking for help takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of strength. And let's talk about it. How, how do you go about asking for help if in fact you're going to be asking for help? Because it's very, very hard. It's hard to ask for help. You don't want anybody to think you're limited. You don't want, you don't want, you don't want it to affect, it's an ego thing. I'm, I'm gonna ask for help. It's so embarrassing. So how do you do that? Well, what we find is in the research, we find that if you're going to ask for help, which again, it's a very good thing to do because it means it shows that you're gonna have a relationship with people. If you're going to ask for help, you need to be very specific. You need to be specific and not just say, oh, I'm falling apart, I can't take it. I'm falling, I'm just, I'm just falling apart. Because the other person will not understand what that means. What does falling apart mean? So when you're asking for help, it's very important to be specific about what the help is that you need. I really need help. I need to talk to you. I'm feeling very alone. You're being clear. Okay, so then the person has the opportunity to say, great, let's set up a time to talk. Let's say you say to somebody that you, you're feeling that you need help financially. Again, same thing. You have to be specific. I need, I need some help financially. I want to borrow some money, but I want to make a contract with you. I'm ready to pay you back the money. I'll give you a time. I'll give you a date. Because the more clarity that you give somebody about what kind of help you need, the easier it's going to be for you because then you're not feeling so incredibly dependent. You're not feeling so needy. And the easier it's going to be for the other person to be able to know what kind of help you need. And so you have to be very specific. That's item number one. Item number two, very often, what do we do when we ask for help? We say, I'm so sorry that I need to be doing this. I'm so sorry I'm asking you. I, I really hate to be doing this. I hate to be asking you for something. I'm so sorry. Please, I'm so, I don't know how to do this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for doing this. Now, just think about it. When you ask somebody for help and you're saying to them, I'm so sorry that I'm asking you for help. I, I, I really hate asking you for help. How is that person going to feel? They're going to feel like they're participating in something that you hate doing. Instead of presenting it in a way where I've got a problem. If you could help me, you would be saving my life. It would be so wonderful. It would just get me out of this mess that I'm in. I would love it if you could help me. Because then you're phrasing it in a way that's very positive. That means you're asking the person to come into a relationship with you that's a very positive relationship. You're asking in a very positive way. Not, oh, I really hate asking you. This is killing me that I need to ask you. Nobody wants to go into a relationship where it's killing you 
that you're asking because they're entering a relationship where it's killing you. They want to go into a relationship with you that's positive. You know, I, right now, I, you know, hi, I need some help. It will be so good for me if you could help me out. You're the person I really would like to help me out. You're the, one, you're the person I'm coming to. There's nobody else I really want to go to. You're the person I trust. You're the person I want to interact with. And that's a very important thing to remember when you're asking for help. Another thing about asking for help, it is not a good idea to ask for help by texting someone. It does not work. If you ask for help by texting somebody, because why are you doing that? Because you're afraid that they're gonna say no to you. So it's so much easier to ask them by text and have them say no to you by text. But studies show they will say no to you by text because texting is not a relationship. So when you ask somebody something by text, people will say no by text. As easy as it was for you to ask by text, that's how easy it is for them to say no by text. So it's very important to recognize the fact that if you're going to be asking someone for help, to ask them verbally. It doesn't have to be person to person. It's, that's not necessary. But it, it's got to be a voice call. It's got to be, hi, how are you? I'm calling because I need some help. People love hearing those words. They love hearing, I need your help. Because what are you doing when you say to somebody, I need your help? You're elevating them. You're giving them an opportunity. You're Power, yeah. them. Oh, you're giving them an opportunity to help you. And so You're I also love empowering you. them. Exactly. You're very good. Thank you. You're also empowering them. So I actually, I love saying those words because I think those words are magical. When you say those words, I need your help. People love hearing it. They love knowing that they are the person that you went to for help. Now, let's say they help you. Very often, and Rabbi Katsin, I'm sure you go through exactly the same thing. Very often, both Rabbi Katsin and I are in the helping fields. Very often, people will come to us, they need the help, we're happy to be there, we're happy to help them, but how much would I love if after they got the help, I got a little follow-up just saying, by the way, everything worked out really well. That, that would just make me feel so good. Not for my ego, but because then I know that they got help. The person is better. Sometimes I meet people 15 years later, after I did something 15 years ago, I don't even remember what I did. And they are then thanking me because they happened to have bumped into me. I want to thank you for what you did to me 15 years ago. That's great, but guess what? 15 years ago, it would have been really good to hear it because then I know my referral was a good referral. It helped you so I can go. I know I can do for other people good referrals. It, it gives me validation that I am doing a good job helping people. It's not about my ego. It's more about the validation that I did a good job helping them and I can move on and help other people. So let's go over some of the stuff that we just said. Um, first of all, let me just say that research clearly shows that when people give help to other people, 90% of the help given is only given when it is asked for. Help is not given when it is not asked for because we don't know what kind of help the person needs. How do I know how to help a person if I don't, if they're not telling me, oh, by the way, Dr. Pei, I need some help. But if they say I need help, 90% of help given is given from, the, from asking for help. So for all of us who are afraid to ask for help, well, help is not coming unless we ask for the help. And remember, help gives us an opportunity to build community. It gives, it gives us an opportunity to build relationships. It's not, it is not debilitating. It is in fact strengthening. It is a strengthening relationship. It's not supposed to break you down. It's supposed to build you up. And hinting for help, not a great idea because people don't really hear the hints. People cannot read what's going on in your mind. 
screaming for help. That's an important thing. I really need your help. I've got a problem and I really need your help. And you're the person I want. You're the person I want the help from. I've got to move some furniture and it's really heavy. Actually, just now I heard that in Brooklyn, there, were, there was a lot of rain today. So my basement got flooded and my, the alarms went off saying that my basement got flooded. So I had to call somebody and I had to say, I need your help. I think that person felt great. They knew that I needed their help. They were called upon. And I'm sure by this time, I don't know if they're listening, but I'm sure by this time, the help was taken care of because I made it clear. I need your help. They ended up going to my basement. They did call me and they said, yeah, there is a flood in your basement. Where do you keep the towels? And there we are. We're in a relationship and my basement will get, will get all cleaned up. So how can someone help you? Only if you tell them that you need help. Keeping it a secret, no one's going to know. You're going to know. It's not obvious to anybody. It's only obvious if you're in a wheelchair. And even in a wheelchair, you probably need to ask for help very often. When you're at the airport and there's a wheelchair person at the airport, wheelchair people, even though everything is wheelchair accessible, very often they still need some help. They may not be able to reach a phone or they may not be able to reach something. So even though even... A wheelchair bound person needs to, to ask for help. Even sometimes a blind person needs to ask for help. But certainly us who are very, who appear to be very capable and very independent, even though we may have the phobia of fear of asking for help, it takes a lot of courage to ask for help. It is a very good thing to do. It is strength building. And if I am rejected when I ask for help, it's not necessarily about me. It may be because the other person is busy doing something else. Like the, like the description that I gave about taking my mother out of the car and I couldn't help the person at that particular time. Asking for help does not mean that you're needy. Asking for help does not mean that you're an incompetent person. You might be a very, I'm a very competent person. However, I needed help. I, I wasn't driving back three hours to find out about my basement. So I needed help. Does that mean I'm needy? Does that mean I'm incompetent? No, it just means I needed to call a friend of mine to say, I need some help. I heard my basement is flooded. The alarm went off. Could you go over and could you help me out? So I think um, the points that we made is that when you are, how, how do you ask for help? When you are asking for help, you need to ask for help and be very specific. What is the help that you need? Number two, when you're asking for help, don't apologize. I'm so sorry that I'm asking for help. I feel horrible. This is the worst thing I could ever do. I, I hate myself for asking you this question. No, you're not going to do it that way. You're going to ask for help in a very positive way. Also, very often people think that if someone is helping you, you need to pay them back. You need to offer them something. You need to incentivize them. Well, if they're helping me, I need to pay them back. I owe them something. It's not true. If you're really in a relationship with somebody, like this, this, this guy who's going over to my house with the towels, right? I'm in a relationship with him. I don't have to say to him, oh, wow, thank you so much. Now that you went to go fix the flooding in my basement, now tell me what I can do for you. If I said that, that wouldn't be a relationship. A relationship is he was there for me at this time that I needed the help. So it's not about me incentivizing him or me um, paying him money or me bribing him. It's about our relationship. And our relationship is such that I felt comfortable saying to him, hi, I really need your help. Another thing is we're not going to ask for help by texting. If you need somebody to help you, it's Hello, I need your help. I did not text him and say to him, oh, my, my alarm went off and it's flooded because possibly he would have answered back, no. Just as, it doesn't mean that much when you're texting. It's more important and much more valuable when you're actually asking the person. And the last thing is that when somebody does help you, follow up afterwards and let them know. I just want you to know, thank you so much for helping me. It makes the person feel really good to know that they helped you. So I think um, that's, that's the conversation. Um, I'm open to questions.
and then we could maybe do an exercise after that. So what's your opinion about all this? 